Hello Floss Tube. This is Heather, the 20 Minute Stitcher, coming at you a little later than usual, filming on Monday morning before I begin my work day. Sorry, I'm like, why my sweatshirt looks weird this morning. Um, oh goodness. Today is Monday, March 13th, 2023. First, a big shout out to my friend Bridgen. Happy birthday, Bridgen. She is uh, 25 today, the Museum Stitcher. Happy birthday. I'm old enough to be your mom, but that's okay. I could be your stitchy mom. I'll be anybody's stitchy mom who needs a, all you young floss tubers out there, if you need a stitchy mom, just reach out to me. Um, but anyway, so life has been crazy and busy and uh, I just didn't film this weekend. So I'm filming very quickly before I start my work day today and hopefully we'll be able to edit it and get it posted tonight. Um, I always feel weird saying that because who knows when you might actually be watching this. You might be watching this three years from now, right? So whatever. But today is March 13th, 2023. This is Floss Tube episode number 37. Um, again, I am Heather, the 20 Minute Stitcher. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I've had a lot of new subscribers um, in the last few weeks. I know in part to some shout outs from a few Floss Tubers, uh, which thank you for that. I know... Um, and I knew I should have looked it up before I started. I'm not even going to say because I remember one and I don't remember the other and I don't want to feel badly. But if you're watching, you know who you are. Thank you so much for, for shouting me out. And if you are here from one of those shout outs, thank you. Thank you for checking me out. I hope you'll like what you see, that you'll subscribe um, and visit again. And for those of you who have been with me for a while, thank you as always for coming back. Um, related to that, my last video was my one year uh, floss tube anniversary video. Thank you to those of you who filled out my happy mail survey that is closed now. Um, and I am starting to work on your little um, stitchy kindness happy mail uh, thing from me. So it'll probably still be a couple weeks before they get mailed out. Um, but uh, it'll be coming your way. Don't you worry. So thank you for being part of my community for being part of my 1000 subscriber celebration. <sighs> On the heels of that, I have to say, I don't have a lot of progress to show today. Um, my stitchy bug abandoned me. Uh, I was really on top of things. Sorry, I didn't unzip my bag. So I'm just gonna do that quietly while we're talking. Um, I started the month strongly um, and stitched every day for the first sort of almost week. And then life happened, nothing horrible. Um, but just super busy, work got a bit overwhelming. My daughter's musical went into tech week and production, um, which was very good. And I still have Mamma Mia songs stuck in my head. I don't know how long that's gonna be, but whatever, at least it's good music. Um, and so I really did not stitch much at all in the last week, like really maybe two days in the last week. First week of March, some pretty good progress. So this will be a bit of a shorter video. It's been, um, not a whole lot of, of stitching happening. Uh, but I do have a new start. I do have um, progress on a couple of whips and uh, and I do have my market order arrived. Thank you, Abby from Top Knot Stitcher. Um, so I can show you, I know I, I did an Instagram reel where I sort of had the photos of the things that I purchased, but now I actually have my patterns. And so I can share a little bit about what I purchased and what kind of my plans are for starting some of them. Um, and we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I have one new start and that is, I'll have to put a picture up um, or actually, hold on, let me do it. I can do it this way. Um, I have one new start and this is for Bridget's birthday. So if you um, watch the Museum Stitchers channel, you know this already. If you don't, um, as soon as you're done with my video, hustle on over there and watch. Um, but she is doing a sal for her birthday. Um, it is hashtag Bridgen's birthday bash sal. And the only requirement to participate is that you stitch on a pattern that starts with the letter B. Um, so either the designer starts with the letter B or the pattern does. So um, she is doing a, a pattern by the blue flower. Um, I had several blue flower patterns in my stash. So I chose a blue flower pattern as well. And I... I chose Cozy Christmas Cat, um, which I believe was, I don't want to misspeak. I think this might have been her exclusive pattern for the Jingle Ball. Maybe, maybe not. 
Um, but that's where I purchased it was at the Jingle Ball. So that is what I decided to start on, which is kind of ironic that the pattern itself actually starts with all C's, but it's by the Blue Flower. So, um, and the sal is actually starting today, but because Mondays are very busy for me, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to stitch on it. I started it yesterday. Um, and I am doing, I'm doing, um, all of this from stash. I kitted all of this up from stash. I am trying to participate in the hashtag SYS 2023, the stitcher stash group. Um, and so this is my teeny tiny little start. Look, I remembered my board this time. So this is my teeny tiny little start on cozy Christmas cat. Um, so that's just part of his sweater. I stitched on this just for about 20 minutes or so during my kids fencing lessons yesterday. Um, and I am using for the green, as I mentioned, I, I'm using, um, I did everything from stash. So I did a full conversion. Um, I'm not using a single one of the called four colors because I don't have them. Um, and, uh, so the, the sweater is actually from Fangirl Fibers. It's a silk, um, that was part of my Ewok mystery box. This is the silk Endor, which I'm so excited to be able to use it because isn't it gorgeous? I don't know if you can really see the variation and stuff in it. It's a really, really pretty. And so I thought it would actually give sort of a very natural, oh, that almost made it worse. Um, I thought it would give it a very natural sweater kind of look um, on the cat. So I am stitching this on a 32 count Jobelin um, in the color Hot Cocoa by Be Stitch Me. Uh, and like I said, stitching my own uh, color conversion on that. So that is my new start uh, that I just started yesterday and I have it in honor of Bridgen because I know she loves Yellowstone as well in my little Yellowstone project bag from Forbidden Fiber Company. So that is my one new start. Uh, as you know, if you're a regular viewer, I'm trying to limit my new starts this year and really let this year be focused on whips. Uh, so my next two projects are my whip go calls for March. Uh, they were numbers two and 22. Number two for me is the Magic Kingdom stitch along. Um, which I am also using as my oldest whip Wednesday, hashtag oldest whip Wednesday um, piece, because it is my oldest whip. I did not get a lot of progress on this. Um, I'm going to have to buckle down, like really buckle down if I'm going to reach my goal, my whip go goal for this in March, um, because my goal was to finish the March and April um, pieces of this, which March is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and April is the Lion King, which I think goes over here. Um, so this is, um, I don't know if I have a before picture. If I do, I'll put it up on the screen quickly. Um, but this is where I am now. So I did add in the blue of her dress. Um, I'm working my way around with sort of this kind of greenish brown color around the poison apple. Um, I did finish in the gold up here at the top and started in on the sort of paler yellow that goes around the dwarfs. Um, but I still have to stitch all the dwarves. And then there is brown, um, you know, the, the floor of the mine underneath them here as well. Um, so there's still quite a lot of stitching on Snow White left. And then I haven't even started Lion King. Um, the Lion King piece, fortunately, I think it looks like it's um, more solid colors. So I'm hoping that will stitch up a little faster. Not as many color changes. Um, as there are for like you can see why I haven't done the dwarves yet because there are a lot of color changes it's like four stitches of red and four stitches of green and then like four stitches of this color and some of the colors repeat which is one of the reasons why I'm trying to get the light yellow in first because then I can just run the thread um, behind until I get to where it's used again but um but yeah so that is my magic kingdom stitch along um, my stitchy bug needs to find its way home <laughs> um, or I'm gonna be stressing trying to reach my whip go goal on this one and it's not going back in bed. It's not, see, nothing's cooperating, behaving with me today. Um, and then my last whip, again, I told you, not much stitching this, these last two weeks. Um, my last whip is my number 22 call for whip go. And that is, here it is, Hope Angel. Ah, come on, light, stop it. There we go. Um, that is Hope Angel. And I have to tell you, I'm sure this has happened to all of us, right? Like you buy a pattern and you don't notice something in it um, until you start stitching it. And they're like, wait, I didn't know that was in there. Y'all don't laugh at me. I don't know. Cause now I do see it in the photo of the pattern. Um, but the word survivor is in her dress here, which I, 
hand to God, never saw, ever. And when I, every time I picked out this pattern and was like, do I want to start stitching this, blah, blah, blah. Never, ever noticed that that word was in there until I started stitching it. I just thought it was like just different, different colors, right? It was just like a shadow or something. And then I started stitching it and I'm like, wait, this is spelling the word survivor. <laughs> I promise I'm an intelligent person. Um, <laughs> but anywho, so my whip go goal on this one is um, seven days. I have stitched five days so far because I really started the month on this one. Um, and so this is my, it's gonna, I've had it, hold on, let me do this. Cause I've had it curled up with my little magic clip here. And um, ooh, is this one even gonna be big enough to, okay, there we go. Keep it from curling up on itself. Um, and so this is where I am at. So before I really only had sort of this part of the skirt outlined and then this white in here that I haven't touched since then. So in the five of my seven days of stitching that I have spent on this so far in March, I have done everything else. So I stitched out the word survivor. Um, I am almost filled in this part of her skirt. Um, and then I started outlining. So this dark gray outlines the whole angel. Um, and now I'm working on the tan. This is DMC 422 um, and this is sort of the like patterning, the filigree is kind of what I think of it. That's in her wings and in her skirt uh, down here as well. Um, so I'm gonna be focusing on the tan next because I actually ironically didn't have 422 in my DMC stash. So I had to borrow it from my mom um, and she took it out of a, a, one of her kitted projects. So I wanna finish it on this pattern as quickly as I can so I can get it back to her for whatever she's working on. But um, but yeah, so good progress on this one. I'm happy. This is just being stitched on an 18 count Ada that I had in my stash, which is another reason why it's stitching pretty quickly. Um, right, we all know that Ada stitching often goes um, a lot faster for whatever reason um, than, uh, than linen or, or even weave stitching. So that is Hope Angel. And I'm stitching this with all the called for DMC um, on, as I said, just an 18 count sort of rose pink Ada that I had in my stash. And that is all the stitching I've done in the last two weeks. Um, so not, not a lot of projects, but some good progress on the Hope Angel at least, and a little bit of progress on my Magic Kingdom. Um, so I have two more days on Hope Angel and that goal is achieved. And then I will be eating, sleeping and breathing Magic Kingdom until that goal is met. Um, and then I will be um, working on Hive Rules, which I have neglected and really, really have to get going for Brandy at Bestitch Me. And then um, perhaps also I don't want to fall. I'm also stitching the British Isles Adventure Stitch Along, which I haven't even, I didn't finish January, um, or excuse me, I didn't finish the, the February. They come out the 26th or 27th of each month. So like the first piece came out in January, but really it's like the February stitching, right? So I haven't finished the February piece. I haven't even started the March. Like I don't want to fall, fall far behind on that, but I got to get with it. <sighs> Hopefully my stitchy bug comes back with a vengeance. Um, all right, so acquisitions. Uh, just a couple of, well, more than a couple of things, but a couple of groups of things. So I did get my Bestitch Me fabric of the month, which um, is... I have to re message Brandy again because I, I meant to, I thought that I messaged her to switch to the neutrals club, but I got the color pattern, which I'm okay with because it's beautiful. Um, this is called Sorbet and I get the, now I get the 32 count Jobelin. Um, but I think I might, I have so much 32 count in my stash. Um, I think I might switch again. <laughs> I just switched to the Jobelin um, from the Lugana just to sort of change up the types of even weave I have um, or the, the types of fabric I have, but um, I might want to switch up the count too. So I might move to a 36 or maybe even a 40, um, but this is the color Sorbet. I'm trying to make sure the color is picking up nicely, but it's, it kind of looks like a peach Sorbet. So that is my fabric of the month from Bestitch Me. All right, market acquisitions. Um, so this is repeat for those of you who follow me on Instagram um, in terms of the patterns, but I did also get, because how stinking cute are they, and hopefully it will pick up um, on the video. Let me get my bo backing board again. Um, I did also get these scissors, which are not market. Oh no, that shows up just fine. I mean, come on. 
look at those little squirrels. They're so cute. And Abby includes little like point protectors that I got a little peace sign point protector. But come on, how cute are those little squirrels? Love it. Can't wait to use these. Love them, love them. Okay, so uh, fast forward if you want, <laughs> if you've already watched my, in, my uh, Instagram reel and don't care what I got from Market, but I'll just go through these really quickly. I think what I'm most excited about from my Market purchases is um, I think every single one, no, not every single one, but most of these designers are new to me. Um, a couple of them, I think I have like another pattern in my stash that they designed, but I haven't stitched it yet. Um, so I'm like really excited that I have new designers, um, to stitch. So, uh, first one is Needle Bling Designs, which this is one I do have one of their, um, X Stitch the Rainbow, the Autumn Garden palette, um, patterns. I do have her pattern from that in my stash, but haven't stitched it yet. Um, but again, squirrels. Check out this squirrel. I mean, seriously, he's in a sweater. He's so cute. So Gather Up Your Blessings by Needle Bling Designs is one of the patterns that I purchased. And then Carriage House Samplings, Anna's Bird. I mean, how gorgeous is that Anahinga? So beautiful. Um, really excited to stitch this. Then I also got my very first Kathy Barrick pattern. Um, Frankie. I mean, look at him. I, so what I love about him is like, he looks like a real rabbit, right? Like not a cutesy bunny, but like a real rabbit. Um, he's big. He's 179 by 152. Um, so I'm probably going to need to buy a 40 count for him. Not need, but I'm going to want to buy a 40 count for him, I think, because he's just big. Um, which is one of the reasons why I've never purchased a Kathy Barrick pattern before, the size of them. Most of them are so big. Um, and I tend to like to stitch on smaller things, or at least big things that have smaller components to them. <laughs> he a big boy. I guess these are smaller components, right? But like, then I'm going to get to him. He going to be a big boy. And I'm either going to love stitching on him, or I'm going to hate stitching on him. So we'll see if Frankie is my buddy or my nemesis whenever I get around to stitching this. I thought about using this to join the Best Bunny style that's being hosted by Katie, the novel stitcher, but I got a different pattern that I think I'm going to use for that in part because I have too many big patterns right now. Um, so I need something smaller. And then I got um, Everyday Things by Heart and Hand, um, which I just really liked the sentiment. And I will probably um, finish this in a little frame and hang it in my entryway. So that's Everyday Things. Uh, heart and hand is not new to me, but uh, but um, finally a farm girl is. So this is my very first finally a farm girl pattern. I just thought she was super cute. I could use this for my best bunny style too as well, I suppose, but I'm not. Um, or at least I don't think I am. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm rethinking because I'm like, oh, it is like patriotic. Maybe I could get it done for July 4th. But let's be honest, I won't because I have too many other things going on. So Lastly, this is what I plan to use for the best bunnies stitch along. This is Chubby Bunny by Jeanette Douglas. Um, I mean, seriously, super cute. And I just, I love this tree with the flowers. I just think it's beautiful. I don't, I'm sure all of us who stitch, right? We have this feeling like there's just, sometimes it's just one little thing in a pattern. I mean, on this pattern is not a little thing. It's pretty big, but um, sometimes it's just one thing in a pattern that, that makes us go, yep. Like, I don't care that that little thing is like 0.07% of the full pattern. I need to stitch the whole thing because I need to have that little motif or whatever it is in my life. So, um, I hear that. So that's going to be my best bunny style, um, stitch along. I'm hopefully hoping to kit that up tomorrow, um, and start that this week as well. Uh, so that is it for my stitching. Uh, I told you this is going to be a short video. I do have some books. Um, if you're interested in books, I, I will be going through those quickly before I close out this video. If you're not, then thank you for spending some time with me today. Uh, I hope that you are doing well and that you um, have your stitchy bug tight in hand still. Uh, if you see mine, send it back my way um, because I need the stress relief of stitching. But lately I've been so overwhelmed and exhausted that like my stress relief has been playing a lot of Legend of Zelda. Um, because I just kind of needed to zone out.
Any who's. Uh, so that's all my stitching. If you're not interested in books, feel free to hop off now. Um, thank you for spending some time with me and have a wonderful day. If you're interested in books, I have four books to share right now, three that I have finished recently and the one that I am reading right now. Uh, and so as I may have mentioned a few videos ago, my kind of theme for my year uh, this year is strength. So I set some goals for myself around strengthening my body, strengthening my mind, um, strengthening my family. So strengthening my mind, one of the things that I have challenged myself to do is add some more nonfiction reading um, into my um, reading repertoire in 2023. I have always read nonfiction. I always have. I've always enjoyed nonfiction. But the last couple of years, probably just because of what was going on in my life, I was reading a lot of just sort of rom-com and, you know, sort of just YA fiction. Nothing wrong with any of that. But um, wanted to get some more nonfiction back into my reading um, cycle, I suppose. So the first couple of books that I have um, are nonfiction audiobooks that I listened to. Um, I'll pop pictures of the covers uh, up on the screen. So the first was called Tip of the Iceberg, like my 3000 some odd journey. It's long subtitle, right? Um, but this book was uh, very interesting because the author, he's a travel writer, um, decided to basically kind of recreate um, a 19th century expedition to Alaska, the Harriman expedition. Um, and, and so he kind of was recreating that expedition. And so the book would go back and forth between sort of um, recapping from the diaries and the reports from that expedition, things that they were seeing in these places that he was traveling to, sort of juxtaposed with his own experiences traveling there in... Um, he wrote the book. Oh, no, I don't remember when he wrote the book. It's not a brand new book, but it's not super old either. Like it's, I think it was written within the last 10 years. Um, sort of, you know, so, so juxtaposed against what's happening in that area of Alaska in the essentially modern world, right? Um, it had some very funny bits, um, especially involving bears, um, but, uh, and some very poignant um, and spoken bits. Um things learned new things which was part of the point of reading the nonfiction. um how actually many of the native alaskans during world war ii um were also relocated is what it was called but it was essentially internment as well um not for the same reason that japanese americans were interred but um mostly because the military wanted their lands for strategic defense and so basically kind of forced them out, which was not anything I'd ever learned before or learned um, or knew. So that was something new that I learned in listening to this audiobook. If you enjoy nonfiction, if you enjoy sort of travel writing slash history, it was actually very, very enjoyable. It was read by the author um, and he did a pretty good job. So I liked that book. I gave it four stars on Goodreads um, primarily because I laughed. I thought, right? It made me think. Um, and it was enjoyable. So that was Tip of the Iceberg. The second nonfiction book I listened to was called Strays. And again, long subtitle, A Homeless Man, A Lost Cat, and like their journey across America, um, I think was close enough to what the subtitle was. Again, I'll put the cover up on the screen. I enjoyed this book. I wanted to like it more. Um, first off, the nitpicky part of me was like, they did not journey across America. Like that cover is a little misleading. They journeyed across Western America. They went to Oregon, California, Idaho, and Montana, which are all very large states. <laughs> and so it was lots and lots of traveling. But when I kind of picked it up, I was like, oh, wow, across America. That's amazing. Still pretty amazing. Right. But nitpicky me was like, no, that's not across America. Um, I know y'all can boo me in the comments. Like really Heather, get over yourself. Um, it was interesting. It was entertaining to listen to. The narrator was good. I think what I struggled with on this one was I wanted to like it more, um, but the cat's actual owner, like the way it was written, it just, he just kind of kept annoying me. Um, and maybe I'm a judgmental cat owner, but I was like, this cat got away from you once and was gone for six months. And like you had a neighbor across the street who, you know, hated your cats and let yet you still let them roam outside and you like 
no wonder your cat went missing again. Like, I don't understand. Like, yes, it's horrible and tragic and I shouldn't be judgy. But at the same time, it was like, dude, like the cat was microchipped. I mean, that's how they ended up finding the owner in the first place. But um, I don't know. I couldn't get over a lot of that. Um, and just some of the, I don't know. I I felt bad about myself after reading this book. So I'm like, oh my gosh, Heather, you're being so judgy. But um, I struggled with that. That said, um, I really, really appreciated how the homeless man, Michael, who found the cat, um, who he named Tabor, um, how the author did such a good job of demonstrating how they're just like any other human being, right? They just don't have a stable home. Um, he and his friends, I mean, they were just, it really humanized the the homeless population. The story of how he became homeless, oh my gosh, quite frankly, sounds like something that could happen to any of us, right? Which um, I think there's such a stigma around homelessness in this country and such an assumption that everyone who's homeless is mentally ill, which Michael does suffer from depression, but not he's not dangerously ill, right? And I think there's a stigma in this country that like homeless people are dangerous by default. Um, so I did really value and appreciate um, the humanization of the homeless population in this book. Um, so I gave it three stars. It was enjoyable. Will I read it again or listen to it again? No, but um, it was it was it was good enough to finish. Let me put it that way. I'm not a person who is afraid to put a book down if I'm really not liking it. Um, but I did finish it because I did sort of want to find out what happened to Michael. I did want to find out, you know, how, you know, how they ended up getting the cat back um, and kind of what happened to the cat and all that sort of stuff. But um, three stars, mostly because I think my own personal issues. Other people might like it a lot more, but I just struggled to like get past the like, why did you let your cat do these things if like you knew? Anyway, so that was Stray's. So those are the two nonfiction books that I've read. And then I finished one fiction book, which I know I've shared before, and that was The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. And I know I'm like three years behind on this book. Um, and so I won't spend a lot of time on it. Speaking of cats. Yeah. I took the jacket off of this book because for when I was traveling, just so ironically, so it wouldn't get damaged. And um, I left it sitting on my dresser and one of my cats decided that it looked tasty. They're apparently not tasty enough because they didn't totally destroy it. But yes, it now has teeth marks in the spine. Anyway, <laughs> so I won't spend a lot of time on this because I'm sure a lot of you have probably already read it. Um, interesting premise um, about sort of getting this opportunity to um, examine the regrets of your life, big and small, and try out Um different lives if you had made a different decision at some point in your past um, and getting to try out different lives and seeing if there is something else you would rather live. And it was um, it was an interesting premise and an enjoyable book. I liked it. And then the book that I am currently reading uh, is a newer release called Ms. Demeanor by Eleanor, Lip Eleanor Lipman. Um, there we go. Uh, so this is from my library. And so this is, in a nutshell, the main character is an attorney in New York City who um, gets a little freaky with a co-worker um, on the roof of her building and is spotted by a person across the street who calls the police. Long story short, she ends up um, getting fired from her job, getting um sentenced to 18 months of house arrest um, or home confinement uh, for her uh, lewd and indecent behavior. Um, and uh, and so this is, this is sort of the story of what is happening to her during that home confinement. She ends up learning that there is another person in her building who also is on home confinement for another kind of white collar crime. Um, and uh, And sort of I'm, I'm kind of learning how those two are getting intertwined. I'm sure they will end up romantically involved in some way because I'm pretty sure this is a rom-com. But um, I'm about a third of the way through right now. Uh, and I won't say too much more because I don't want to spoil anything. Um, and obviously, I'm only a third of the way through. So a lot of the plot has yet to develop. But uh, it's been enjoyable so far. It's a quick, easy read. The chapters are short. Um, so this is mostly my, like, before I go to sleep reading um, because I can easily get a couple chapters in before I go to bed. Uh, so, so far enjoying. We'll share updates as I, as I go. 
I think that is finally everything I have. Thank you so much again for spending some time with me. Uh, if you are reading something right now that you would like to recommend, feel free to drop that in the comments. And um, I meant to come up with like a question to ask today, but I forgot to. So that's what happens when I get off schedule and I'm trying to cram this in, <laughs> squeeze in this filming before I start my work day for the, for the day. So um, thank you so much for spending time with you. If you have made it all the way to the end of this video, why don't you drop a, a book emoji uh, in the comments. And um, as I always close my videos, um, hug your loved ones, take care of yourselves and uh, happy stitching. Have a great day. Bye everyone.